please excuse the audio on my airport. But today we are going to be designing a PCB uh, for a keyboard with this layout. Um, you can mock your layouts at uh, keyboardlayoutedit.com. And this is just a collection of assorted keys. Um, let's make a little macro pad. Um, I'm going to be using KiCad 6.0 um, keypad. I use it, I say KiCad. Um, and then I'm going to be using libraries from Kibio and from MarBastLib. Um, Kibio libraries primarily for the ProMicro footprint and MarBastLib for the hot swap sockets. Um, the links here uh, I can send out or make available. So uh, we're going to start making a new project in KiCad. I'm just going to call it PCB and open the schematic here and start laying down components. So I want this to be a hotspot PCB uh, using an Arduino Pro Micro. Um, so I want to use the A key to add a symbol and I want to search for Pro Micro. And in Kibio, uh, which we have added to our libraries, it shows up here as a Pro Micro. And we'll double click that and drag it onto our PCB. And then we also and hit escape to get out of that. And then we're going to hit A again to add a hot swap socket. I'm going to search for a hot swap. Nothing comes up, of course. Uh, so let's just look at that more fast with. There we are, more fast with MX. We have MX switch hot swap, MX SWHS. Grab one of those. And I actually am going to see how many we need of these. So we need. 4 plus 3 is 7. 4 plus 3 is 7 is 14 total. I'm going to keep it kind of a grid layout here, so I'm going to take this and copy Control C, Control V, of course, and paste it. I'm going to also move them so they're kind of on the grid, on the dots, and get 14 of these. Let's just make it easy on ourselves and do 16. And 4 by 4 grid, just repeating the copy paste. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. We don't need all 16, so we'll get rid of the two we don't need. And you can see how this resembles this pretty easily. Um, and that's almost it uh, for the schematic. We're going to have to wire things up, but there's nothing else we need to add. I'm going to make this full screen now, uh, just so I can hit this button. It says run, wait, wait, this button. Fill in schematic symbol reference designators. Um, that's going to turn these question marks into numbers. And I'm zooming in and out and panning with my middle mouse scroll wheel and then clicking down the scroll wheel to pan. So fill schematic reference symbols. I'd like to use sort symbols by Y position. That way you can read it left to right. It defaults to X position, uh, but Sort symbol by position. And I also like to keep using annotations. Just so when you run this multiple times, it doesn't reorder things. So let's annotate that and close. We'll see our Pro Micro now has a U1 designator, and our switches have numbers. So we have 14 switches, one to 14. So that's perfect. Now, the next thing to do is to uh, apply footprints to all of these. So there's another button just down in this top row down the way, run footprint submit tool. So we'll run that tool and I'll load up all of our footprints. In the center will be a list of all the components on our board. And then on the left is a list of library footprint libraries that we have loaded up. On the right is the list of footprints in that library. And we can sort through here to see which ones we want where. Um, the Pro Micro, I'm going to go down to that Kibio alphabetical order. Kibio parts here. They have a Pro Micro footprint that I like. Um, Arduino Pro Micro, just the standard one. You can do the top side one, but I like using the standard one. I mean, you can right click on that and view it before we select it. So that does look like a Pro Micro. So we'll double click that to assign it to U1. I had to select it and double click that to assign it. 
Now we're going to have to go through this list of switches and see which size hot swap socket we need. Right now they all say, uh, I don't think there's any bigger. They all say SWMX hot swap or HS1U, and we know that not all of our stuff is 1U, so let's snap that over here. Bring this up again. So we need, they're in order 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way through 14. The switch 1 needs to be a 1.5U. Um, so let's shrink this down and see if we can find a 1.5U for. Switch one. Now, it's in the marbastlib library, so let's go to marbastlib mx here and find switch one's 1.5u. So we will go hot swap. I want to say mx hot swap 1.5u. So there it is. And we'll keep going down the list all the way. 1.5u, 3 and 4 are 1u, 5 is 1u, 6 is 1.75. The 175 STP is your stepped caps locks. That's 225, number 7. Uh, there isn't a 225 option, so we're going to keep it as 1U for now. We'll address that soon. 8 is 125. 9 is 125. Hot swap 125, yes. I need to select the hot swap version of 125, which is down here. 10 is 1U. 11 is 150, so that's 1.5U. 12, 13, 14 is 1, 175, 225, 1, 175, here we are. The 225 we'll address shortly. So we need to add stabilizers to those. So that's it. All of our footprints are assigned. We'll hit OK. Now there are two stabilizers we need to add uh, to the two 2.25U keys. So we're just going to add a stab, an MX stab right here. That's the footprint, or that's the symbol on the schematic. We're going to add one next to this button, and we're going to copy and paste that as well next to this switch. Those are our 2.25 switches, number seven, Oops. number seven, and number 14. So we have stabs next to them to indicate they are stabilized keys. We'll run that uh, symbol reference designator tool again and just annotate and that adds S1 and S2 next to those. And we'll get the footprint assignment tool and we'll see what we can do about those stabs. So those show up here, S1 and S2 at the very top. Right now they've defaulted to stab 6.25U. That's a standard space bar on an ANSI layout keyboard. And we're just going to go to the Mars Lab, our Mars Blast Lib MX. Find the 2.25 view stab. There it is. So we're going to select that for switch 2 as well. It's right there. It's just a stabilizer. Now there's another version of it up here. I wanted to see what that is. That is your standard stab with screws and holes. There's two holes. Um, well, here, there's a P indicator, and I like the P indicator, because these are plated holes, and they have a bit more, um, there's a, a lining of metal inside of that hole when you get the PCB manufactured, and that's the screw hole, and it just makes things a little bit stronger. That's the one I like to use. So those are our stabs. Those are, so now everything is assigned a footprint of the right size. We can hit this green button. The top says Open PCB Import Editor. Or actually, we should probably save while we're here. Control S. Open the PCB editor, and that'll open up a blank PCB. There's nothing here. So the first thing you want to do is hit this kind of half beige, half green button that says Update PCB with changes made to schematic. This is going to take the schematic and all the footprints that we assign and bring them onto the PCB. So let's hit that button. Now we can see the changes it's going to make. It's going to add all these switches and stab holes and our Arduino Power Micro footprint. And um, I leave all of these checked. Uh, this basically keeps things nice and tidy as you go. If you want to read the descriptions, figure out what they do as you do more PCB designs, feel free to I'll update PCB. That just throws everything 
willy-nilly <laughs> onto your screen. So um, now we need to figure out what's what, where it goes where. Um, some things to point out. Uh, the colors of layers. So on a standard PCB, there's two layers. There's the front and the back. The front layer um, is red in PyCat, or by default, and it makes it my version. And the back layer is green. You can test that up in the top right-hand corner. Um, and then there are the edge cuts, and this is really the only thing you need to know, is, is front layer, back layer, edge cuts. Everything else is kind of arbitrary or not really needed for, for most things. There's also the silk screens. Those are going to uh, be printed uh, onto the PCB when it's manufactured. So you can do uh, text or even small graphics uh, to note you know, where things are, what things do. Because this is a simple PCB, we're not going to add any diodes or do a matrix. Um, it's going to be very straightforward. Uh, we also want to keep track of the courtyards. There's F front and back F and D courtyards. We don't want things to overlap too much, um, especially the keys. Those we need to have in the right uh, grid and spacing. So uh, speaking of grid and spacing, we need to make sure we can actually place these in the right places. So the standard uh, key unit width is 19.05 millimeters, which is exactly 3 quarters of an inch. Yes, it is based on the imperial units of inch. Um, so I'm going to go to this grid drop-down and edit the user grid to a multiple or a division of 19.05 uh, millimeters. I like to use the divided by 12, um, or uh, rather the divide by 24, because that gives us a bit of room to play. So let's open the calculator real quick. And do 19.05 divided by 24. That is 79375. So we want 0 0.79375 on both the x and the y axis. OK. So that's going to let us see how the cursor kind of snaps to a grid. That's going to let the cursor snap to 0.75. 0.79375 uh, grid spacing. So we'll select that grid from the drop down. It's going to be at the very bottom. And we're going to start placing our switches. Now the hot swap sockets need to be on the back of the PCB. Right now the red indicates that they're on the front. We're going to do this in order. So let's go back to our layout and see what needs to go where. So switch 1, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, there we go. Switch 1 is at 1.5. So let's go find switch 1. That's switch 6. Here's switch two. Now this is tedious, but there's a hack here. You can go back to the schematic, click on switch one, and then alt tab, and it's automatically zoomed in and highlighted for you. So we'll move it and we'll flip it to the back side with the key of F. That's F for flip. And then we're just gonna place it in the old place, and it's in the top left, so we're gonna place it in the top left of the whole board. So Alt-Tab back to the PCB, select Switch 2, and boom. It's right there. It got it for you. Hit F. And we want to place it so that it's lined up, kind of butted up against each other on the same pixel. And it's going to get it perfectly in line on the standard spacing grid. I'm going to continue this process for the rest of the switches. And the same deal with panning with the middle mouse button um, applies. I'm hitting M to move and F to flip. So that's M to move and F to flip. Now here we have this switch. It's only a one unit key. But we know we have a stabilizer here. So select the stabilizer. And there we are. We can put the stabilizer in place. It lines up perfectly on the right side there. And then move the switch so that it fills that little square designated in the middle. That's how you do stabilized keys. Continue here.
Okay, so that's our last stabilized key. So let's get this stab. Now, something about the stabilizers on the bottom edge is that these tabs hang off the bottom edge. We want the edge of the PCB to be this white border or slightly inside of it. If we use R to rotate this around, now the screw holes are along the bottom edge, but they don't go over the bottom. And so that lets you use a PCB mount stabilizer without having to extend the PCB out beyond the, the footprint of the switches themselves. Okay, so all the switches are in place. Uh, stabilized keys are in place. For consistency sake, I'm going to also flip this one up upside down, um, just so that they're both in the same orientation. It doesn't matter. If it's in this. It doesn't matter which orientation your stabilizers are. It's kind of a preference thing. Um, there are. Excuse the airport announcement. Sorry. Maybe instances where you need to flip them where you don't depends on what interferes with what, but this is a pretty simple PCB. Now, the biggest thing to place now is this Pro Micro. This is the controller. Um, and in the final design of this, the controller will actually be uh, not attached to the PCB, but rather by wires. So the actual placement of this is not going to matter too much. Um, because there's going to be wires connecting everything. But I would like it to be kind of central, so it's easy to access, easy to route to. And also, I don't want it to overlap with anything. So I don't want any of these rows of circles to overlap with anything like these holes or uh, any of these hot swap sockets. Uh, so if they can cross through the bottom of these switches. They shouldn't cross through these hot swap sockets or through these holes or actually anywhere near a stabilizer cutout. And this is just to give the solder joints a bit of breathing room. So I think I'm going to place it around this switch here. Now this is technically, you know, the little circles cross. That's not going to be... It's not going to be working too well, so... I'm going to move this up just a bit so that it is, uh, we also, yeah, well, actually, probably is what you want to do. There's a number of ways you can go about it. Um, I also don't want the pins to really cross too much into this yellow square, these yellow squares. This is going to be an interesting place. I haven't really thought this through yet, so give me a second. Oh, these three line up really well vertically. Let's see if I can squeeze that. Oh, no, that's not the case either. Let's see. How can I fit this? The other option is to... Yeah, this is going to be our best bet here. I want to line this up on, on this axis, um, right central with this, and I'm going to put it right up against the left edge uh, for really no particular reason, just because it looks good. I'm going to place it such that these have minimal interference with each other. So I'm going to move, and I can hold down control to get fine movement instead of snapping to the grid. Do I want to do that? I'm not entirely sure. Let's see. What would, what would work best? I think that actually works best than we had originally. So this obviously has a small overlap um, in the 
safety margin zones around these pads, but the actual pads are not touching and the safety margins are not completely overlapped. So this is, this is acceptable. Uh, hot swap socket will be a bit tight on those pads. So I might actually nudge this up just one notch. No, I'm actually not. I'll keep it right there. And we're going to make do. Right there. That'll, be, that'll be just fine. Um, yeah, that's going to work. So, so the, the black hole in the middle is where the actual metal is. And the pin doesn't actually go all that far. And the hot top socket doesn't go anything beyond this purple line. So there is still a bit of space for the metal to come through. And you can solder against the top edge there. So we've replaced our Pro Micro, finally. Um, and now we just have to route everything. So being a simple board, half of, or so each side of each switch, one half of it needs to go, each switch, one side of it needs to go to the Pro Micro, the other side needs to go to ground, and that's a common point. So let's go back to the schematic and work through that. I'm going to use this wire tool, which is a black diagonal line on the right side, to connect all of the bottom halves of these switches together. And then I'm going to connect all of those bottom halves together through a vertical line all the way through. Actually, I'm not going to do that at all. I'm going to use a ground symbol. So let's use the add key in A to add ground, G N D. It's just an upside down triangle. And we're going to Take a few of these, control C, control V on that, and wire those in with the wires. Okay. All those pins on the ground is perfect. And we'll also take that ground and add one to every, use R again to rotate, every one of these G and D pins on a Pro Micro. So those G and Ds have G and Ds. There we go, and things can overlap. You know, the world for text overlap the lines, but it doesn't look too good. So we can try moving this text out such that we can read what's going on. There we go. That's pretty good. That's one half of it done. The next half is just kind of seeing where things go. So let's go back to the PCB, or save this. Save it, and then go back to the PCB and update PCB with changes made to schematic again. So we've made those changes, we can update. And what we'll see is when we turn on the rat's nest here, which is on the left side, like a maze of white dots, it shows you the connections that need to be made. So um, one side of each of these switches needs to be connected to each other and to the Pro Micro here on ground. And the other side needs to be connected to, well, everything else. Uh, I don't like how this ground is so close to all of these doesn't sit well with me, uh, but that's, you know what, I think we can actually change this footprint out to something else. Let's see, if I select this footprint and give hit E to edit, I can change that footprint to, and then select a new footprint ID, select a different hot swap socket. So I think Kibio or MX only has a hot swap. This is a different library. Uh, and I haven't showed you that yet, but there are other hot swap libraries out there. We'll find that 1U hot swap. And this hot swap footprint has smaller pads. Uh, also, it's flipped. <laughs> there we go. So there's no pad interference here, it's just this. So I like how I want to connect this pin there. So that's like kind of logical. So I actually want this one to be ground for this switch instead of that one. So let's go to this switch, this switch 6 back to the PCB, and instead of this be on ground, I want this one to be on ground. I want to remove these connections. And uh, basically I want to rotate this around so now this is, is pointed in here instead of on top, and we'll add that connection back. And then we can update the PCB. Ah, the footprint didn't stay. Let's go back here and change the footprint from the Change the footprint from the schematic itself. We'll change 
this footprint value, we'll select that from library, the little button right here. Go back down to Kibio parts, or MX only. Is it in Kibio parts? If it is, I'd be very happy. Let's see. There's MX. I haven't actually used. Kibio parts too much. Does not seem to be any Kibio parts. So I'm going to use this MX only uh, library that I have from who knows how long ago. Update it here. Okay. Let's go. Here's the tedious part, and then we have ground over here. We need to connect all these in a manner that makes sense. So the rest is going to give you kind of a good starting point. So to connect things, uh, we need to hit this blue button on the right with a zigzag line. It says route tracks. And we'll just start at a track at this green one, and we're going to start routing. And I'm going to connect this ground to ground. And when you select a net, it'll pop up which ones are need to go where. It's pretty simple that way. It looks like all these grounds are kind of close to each other, so that's pretty fortunate. Now, if it goes through something like that, you can hit the slash uh, or question mark key, the slash key, to flip its direction. And that should make things pretty easy to route. Let's just get some of these grounds connected that are nearby, and then we'll see about like this ground can come like through the switch. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Same for this one. Come straight down. And can this go straight up? Uh, let's take this one across this way. I really should be doing the ground fills with a, a, the ground lines with a fill instead of these traces, but this is working out just fine. I'm going to take this one down the middle again. And then it's, it's, yeah, we'll do it that way. This one down. Uh oh, it's interfering with that. So let's take it down the other way with the slash button. And now we're going down that direction. And same here, it's kind of interfering. So why don't take it from this way? That looks good. I mean, so have one more white line connection to make. I can go just like that. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So I'm going to control Z on all of that and rip it all up and do something else instead. I'm going to do what's called a ground fill. So on the right side there is a filled zone. This is blue zone. Thing. Let's just add the, let's do it to the front and back layers on the ground net. That will look best. I'm just make a big box around everything. Just by clicking. And then here you can either find the exact pixel that you clicked on or just double click and that closes it. And then we're going to build that zone with the B button. And that'll fill everything with copper. That looks fantastic. Um, this reminds me, we have skipped an important step. Defining the board's outline. Uh, you can select what layer you're working on by clicking the layers through here. And the edge cut layer is going to give the PCB manufacturer the chance to see where you want to cut the edge. So we're going to put this right on that gray line with a bunch of draw lines. I'm going to start in the corners here and draw a line that goes all the way to every corner. I'm using middle click to pan. And that should give us a closed shape. So when we hit B now, it only fills the copper within the thing. Now, this is actually kind of the start of the PCB. It looks pretty good at this point. So let's hit Alt-3 to open up the 3D viewer. And that's our circuit board. I mean, it looks... That's a circuit board. <laughs> Not done, but that's just kind of the physical shape. Now, I don't like these sharp corners, so let's get rid of those. So on the edge cuts layer, I'm going to draw an arc. And I'm going to come in... One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five from the corner and draw an arc going clockwise. Uh, 5 times 0.7 is, that's 
something like three millimeters, so it's a pretty good size. If you're having trouble selecting things like this line because you keep selecting the clicker behind it, you can go over here to this red and black inactive layers button. It says toggle active layers. And that'll basically dim everything that isn't the layer working on, allowing you to click the stuff that's on the layers you're working on. I can just take this dot and drag it to the end of that of that corner. Now I have a nice rounded corner on that side. So let's round all the rest of corners. I'm going to copy this arc. I'm going to hover my, my mouse over the center of the arc. Hit Control C. So when I go to paste, it'll be pasted from the center. I can use R to rotate that around. Let's paste that in that corner and in the bottom corner and here. And then we can just drag that until it snaps with that uh, circle outline. All right, perfect. And we'll hit uh, this toggle inactive layers button again to see everything. And hit B again to refill that zone in the corners. Looks like in 3D. There we go. The rounded corners look much better. Feels much better. And this is going to show you the orientation of the chrome micro. Oh, the TX is... That's fine. So this chrome micro is going to have the components facing the PCB because the TX is in what is essentially the right-hand side, if you look at it this way. If the, if the TX is on the left-hand side, then the components are facing out of the screen. But right now the components are facing into the screen, which means the components will be facing the PCB itself, which it doesn't really matter. That is just fine. All right, so we're, we're like most of the way done. I'd like to hide the fill. It kind of gets in the way, but it's there. Now I want to route every pad, like I want to route this pad to this, or this pad to this, or to the front micro. So I want to start with what's really close, and then work on my way out. Now this pad number two here, uh, switch number six rather, has a pad really close to pin 16. So I want to wire this to pin 16. I'm going to go back to my circuit board here. Now that's, what switch is that? It's a switch. 6, SW6, needs to go to pin number 16. SW6 needs to go to pin number 16, which is this pin here. I'm going to add a label, which is this kind of A with a tag around it, and just call it SW6. And I'm going to put that on pin 16. And I'm going to copy that and put it onto this uh, switch six so that now these two are connected via a label. A label is like a wire that's invisible. Instead of a physical wire, a green line, it's just uh, the label denoting the different uh, shared connections. That's that one. So let's uh, update the PCE. And it shows a small white line. We can route that with a trace just like that. Now the next one I want to do is this top row, maybe this one over here, and maybe this one over here, maybe this top half. I want to get this top half wired up to this top side, and this bottom half wired to the bottom side. So I'm going to start routing these kind of in a manner that kind of pushes them towards the middle. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to kind of put it right there. I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to put it right there. And then I'm kind of trying to just see how many funds we have and where they need to go. Right now we have uh, 15, 14, and 13. These three on this side, I think I want to do for these three switches. And then the three up from here, 6, 17, 18, 19, I want to use uh, these three switches. So let's go see what that is. 17, 18, 19, those are usable. I'm, we, I'm trying to use just these bottom 16 pins, basically. And these three switches are usable, so let's use those. Um, on 19, I want to do switch 5. So I want this to go to number 19 right there, eventually. And then switch 1 and 2, I want to go to 
18 and 17. So let's make 19 and E to edit. Switch 5. And then I want that to be on switch 5. And then I want this to be switch 1. This is all by just what's convenient to route. What's the easiest thing to place? Switch 1 and 2. I'll put those on switch 1 and 2. In fact, let's go ahead and make all the rest of the tags for the switch while we're here. Let's switch 3. This is going to be switch 4. We've got 5 and 6. Let's switch 7. All the labels made. Now these three I want to kind of fan out as well, so I'm going to fan this out to there, this one out to here, and the last one down to here. So that's going to be switch three, four, seven in descending order going that way. So I want three, four, and seven. Just like that. So let's save this and let's route those top ones by updating the PCB from the schematic. See, so yeah, now we have wires playing them all, little air wires. And grab this and route it right into place. This one's coming in just like that. This we're going to fan out. Let's fan it out and up like this a bit. And then this will go up and across. But the other way with a slash P, like that, and then here we can go just straight across like that. That looks good. That's seven of our things connected. Do the next seven here. So we have these two over here, these two here, these two here, and over here. Uh, and we have these eight pins along this side. We also have these two uh, TX and RX we could use. I think I might use TX and RX in this case. I'm going to put uh, this one, it's going to go all the way up and around and go to TX. The next one's going, so I'm going to have switch 12 go to this top TX pin, and then switch 8 go to the RX pin. And then switch 8, yes. So switch 12, I'm going to the TX pin, and switch 8, I'm going to the RX pin. So let's try that. Oh, we need to update from PCB here. We have those connections. It's going to swing all the way around. don't want to get too close to the outer edge. I want to stay a couple of clicks in. Stay about two clicks in like that. So that's about two clicks in from the outer edge. One, two. And that can swing all the way around here. And then this can swing. Oops, it's fine. It's kind of I have a little mind of its own, that slash key, and click it the other way, just like that. Now we have six more, or five more to go, one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to fold them into here. So let's do switch 13, uh, kind of coming around this way, I want it to go like this, and kind of swing back around, so let's put that the next one down, I think it's D1. Go to D1. Switch 13 at D1, which is print 5 here. So I'm going to delete this. Hit the delete key, select and delete. I'm going to go to D1 as soon as I update the PCB. I'm going to do that every single time. There it is. Now this I go, the next pin down, so. Switch 9, I go to pin 6. Right there. 
update the PCB. There it is. And there we have it. Uh, yeah, 14, I think, can come up the middle through here. Going that way. And 10 can go that way. And then we come in. So let's have uh, this one 14. I'm going to use these bottom three right here. Uh, 10, 11, 12. It's got to be for switch 14 and 11. So switch 14. Mm -hmm. 10. And then 10 goes to 11. 11 goes to 12. How confusing is that? Huh. Well, that's okay. It's actually PP4, PP5. When you, and the, there's so many numbers. It doesn't mean much at all. Um, so that's all of the switches now are connected to our Pro Micro. So let's update our PCB from the schematic and finish routing. It goes right there, there, and let's kind of weave this in between all these holes. There we go, just like that. So that's everything connected to the Pro Micro. It's a big spider web. <laughs> hit save on that, and then we're going to hit B one more time to rebuild that ground plane. So that's everything routed. Um, the ground plane should take care of these ground nets connecting because if I show the ground plane with this blue button over here, you can see that they actually have little connections to each of the pads um, that it's going to go out and connect over here and such. But the final thing to do before you have the PCB finished is to run the DRC. So this is a little list of the check mark. That's the DRC, the design rules checker. I'm going to go to the bottom right and hit Run DRC. It's going to show you all of your things you did wrong. <laughs> so let's see what it says. I don't really care about the warnings right now, so let's just look at the errors. Footprint has a malformed courtyard self-intersecting. Oh, uh, yeah, the uh, this, this old footprint doesn't really have the best-looking courtyard, so it you can basically ignore that. The, the courtyards don't really matter as long as you are aware of the actual size of the components that you're working with. The warnings here are all about silk screen, so we'll have silk screen clicked by a solder mask, and silk screen clicked by a solder mask, and that's okay. The silk screen is um, these kind of purplish lines and text, and that's what you see when you hit close this. When you hit Alt F3, look at the 3D model. You can see you can see our traces on there. It looks really good. Then you see these lines and text. And when it says it's clipped by the solder mask, it just means that like, this little exposed piece of copper is touching the line and cutting it off. And that's okay. That's not the end of the world. I mean, oh, look, the silk screen is clipped here by this hole. It's not the end of the world. It's fine. As long as you know what needs to go where. So I consider this a done PCB. I would be competent in manufacturing this. Or I wouldn't manufacture it, but having it manufactured and uh, soldering on some hot stop sockets and uh, just ordering this and get some sockets and get a Pro Micro and solder it up. It's going to look good. It's going to look really good. So that's uh, that's it. We made a little, little PCB. All right. Um, you know where to find me. <laughs> See ya.